Good morning. Let's start this beautiful Wednesday with prayer. Father, we dedicate this day unto you. Be glorified, Lord, as we continue with Psalm 18. Speak to us that when disaster come upon us, we'll know what to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's really amazing how disaster never makes an appointment with you. <laughs> it comes to you when you're not expecting but there's a way to deal with that, as um, King David speaks here. This is from Psalm 18, and we so far have learned that when you cry out to God, God's going to step up. His nostril will have smoke come out and fire out of his mouth, and arrows of lightning will just disperse, van vanish the enemy. Then, verse 15, then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundation of the world were uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostril. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me, delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support, he also brought me out into the broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. And then verse 20 through 26, it talks about why he delighted in me. But up to this point, wow, it says what? That he will deliver me. The calamity, the disaster will come upon me. Wow. What do you do when disaster come upon you, folks? You declare the response by the name of our God. See, the reason that God gave us different names is because when you're sick, call upon the name of God, Jehovah Rapha, one who heals. That's why God said, I am the becoming one. I am that I am. Why? I will become the God that you need me to be at that particular moment. Are you sick? Call on the name Jehovah Rapha, one who heals. Are you in need? Do you need you need provision? Well, then cry out to God, Jehovah Provider, Jehovah Nisi, no, Jehovah Jireh, right? Jehovah Jireh. What about when you are defeated after defeated, like today, like reading David and David said, Jehovah Nisi, one who's victorious, the banner over me. You know, when they the country went out for war. And people are desperately waiting at the castle. Oh, is our enemy uh, winning or is our people winning? And then they see march of the, our, our army coming back. Do they have the banner up? Do they have the banner up? Because banner up means they won. They're victorious. If they're not, and then the enemy are coming. So hide, run, go to the cave. Because now... The enemy will come and ravage the place and rape the woman, kill the children, take all the possession. So the people, I mean, this is a desperate time. They are looking, banner over me, banner over the army. What? Jehovah Nisi. So are you in need of leadership, some kind of guidance? You feel lost? You feel like, well, then call out Jehovah Ra Rapha. Uh, Rof. Rof. Rohai, Jehovah Roh, the, he's my shepherd. Do you need, you feel weak, you're powerless and helpless? Call on the Jehovah name El Shaddai. Right? El Shaddai is magnificent one, powerful one. Right? The disaster may come upon you, but he will deliver you out of the strong hand. Right, Just like Moses because the whole 15 and 16 is talking about what he sent from above and took me, drew me out of water. What means Moses, right? What's his name? Moses. He drew me, drew out of the water. Moses and the experience of Moses, how the channel of the sea cleared and the earth was shown and people walk on a dry land and, and talk about Exodus 15, 8, how the nostril, the air, the the wind from God's nostril came, the Bible says, and split the water. 
So here you're talking about the nostril and the smoke and the fire. And in the same manner in 15, the channels of the sea, clear foundation was uncovered and they walked through and you drew me out of the water, took me out of the water. Wow. Many waters, not just one, right? Many disaster calamities. They deliver me from my strong enemy. Who is he primarily talking about for Saul? I mean, for David, it's King Saul. He delivered me from my strong enemy, King Saul, and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. I think I shared this several times already, but you know, I was really shocked by the Chicago research uh, that on the average, when you meet 10 strangers, six people will not favor you. No, they don't like you. They don't care for you. Isn't that crazy? Majority of people that you just normally meet, you know, they will never say because of the relationship or whatever, but they they don't really care for you. <laughs> that's kind of sad, but that's the research data. And I, I don't know, I don't know how to rebuke that because I haven't done my own research on that. But you know, maybe true. And the point is whether six or four or five, it really doesn't matter. A large percentage of the people that you normally meet is not going to favor you or care for you or pray for you and love you and you know want to be with you. So just turn off your, you know, care for them. Just move on. Just do what God has called you to do. Don't waste your life trying to please people who naturally don't like you. Right? There's there's no point. So he said, well, these are too strong and they overtake and well. They hated me, but they were too strong for me. Uh, you know, talking about research, and I'm just having so much fun researching so many projects and so many topics. And what I've been doing right now is if I want to kind of imagine a research topic, then instead of research for just for my sake, no, it's, it's kind of boring when I do it for myself. Um, I am now researching for sake of writing a book so that I could teach and I could pass out and I could translate into Kamai and then uh, teach our students. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, I thought to myself, you know, what would happen if Kierkegaard became a missionary and came to Cambodia? What kind of ministry would he be engaged in? So I decided, yeah, that would be great, you know, topic to research. And then I came up with the topic and then I researched it and wrote it as a book. Of course, this is with Charlie in my ChatGPT. And it's just so superb. This is, I love, love, love. And, you know, when you pay for ChatGPT, Dell, 20 bucks a month, it remembers all your research in prior. What do I mean by that? I've done already by this time, wrote more than, I guess, 10 books uh, with Char Charlie. Um, so, beginning of the year, I said, hey, this is my teaching. I wrote about three, four, five books uh, in, in, on Cambodia, uh, in Cambodia, Kierkegaard, in both in English and in Korean. So um, what, what I do is I put it up, put that into ChatGPT, um, and then um, ask it to analyze. I saw I put like whole section of Kierkegaard and said, make what I wrote into A through Z of Kierkegaard. And it did. A, authenticity, B, belief, C, choice, D, you know, despair for the adults, you know, and decision for the young kids and because they don't understand despair. So that's great. So I got all this version, you know, Cambodian version, Korean, you know, English version and A through Z of Kierkegaard. Now I said, Charlie, use all I wrote for Kierkegaard and if he came to Cambodia as a missionary, what kind of philosophical principle, right? Uh, so what, whatever you, you uh, write based on that, and it did, it just wrote out something like, I think 12 points, and I said, no, these points are not really up to par, and nor is it realistic or whatever. So I turned it into five points of Kierkegaardian philosophical foundational truth that could be applicable in Cambodia mission. And then I turned that in, into a book. And I, I'm just loving it. I, I'm going to do book talk soon. And 
you're going to be mesmerized by the insight. And I was mesmerized by, wow. And because all those stuff that Kierkegaard said that he would do, I was engaging for almost 20 years. That's what I, that's all I did. And I realized, ah, I did what I did against the current of the so-called mission of fashion because I was Kierkegaardian. I was existentialistic, philosophic, and followers of Kierkegaard as I follow Jesus. I know people get like, oh, what do you mean you're following? No, I'm just... Just like some, I'm just, I'm just like saying something. I'm a Presbyterian. What are you? You're followers of John Calvin. I'm Lutheran. Oh, you're followers of Luther. I'm Methodist. Oh, you're followers of John, right? Wesley. So in the same manner, I'm just simply saying that, yeah, I, I mean, without even knowing, because who I am has evolved so much into Kierkegaardian existential philosophy. His five principles that Charlie has came up with, it is in sync with all that I've been doing in Cambodia for 20 years. So it's kind of wow. Well, in that, I was flipping through, wow, is there anybody in Korean history who really processed thinking this way? And I found this uh, guy named Chung Yak Yong. Chung Yak Yong was in Choson era. He was the practical scholar. This core Shirakja, which means practical scholar. And he wrote on everything that he could get his hands on. He published 500 books before he died. And he died young. So, <laughs> wow. You know, so I'm thinking, wow, I, I, was, I thought I wrote more than 100 books. I thought I was cool, but 500 books? Because he learned to turn all his research into a book, which, which I'm doing now with help of with ChatGPT, man. Uh, I'll be, I'm going at full speed, which is great, you know, and so. Well, a bit of a sharing of what's happening in my life, and this is the 20th day of Media Fest, so I have so much time to process and study and read and meditate, and many, many more books will be published because of that. Well, tomorrow, final day of media fest of 21 days and dinner fest. Hopefully that I look much thinner after 21. This is being pre-recorded. So help help us, God, when the disaster, calamity come upon us, will not be shaken, but call on the name of God, overcome and experience Moses, the, us taking out of the water. And, and we stand on the very foundation of the problem of the Red Sea. The water will disappear. We'll stand on the foundation. We'll face the issues, Lord. We'll face and we'll walk on. And you put us in a public place, broad place, not some crack somewhere in the world, not in the valley, Lord. You put us in the plateau or you put us in the open field, Lord God. Save us, oh God. Save all of us, Lord, today. We're so weak, we cannot do it. We depend on you, Holy Spirit. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mm.